We couldn't talk about corruption in Washington without mentioning Bill and Hillary Clinton. I mean, nobody loves power and money more than these two. The dynamic duo, perhaps the most famously crooked couple in the United States. They met way back in 1971 at Yale Law School, and the rest is history, literally. These two have managed to do a lot in their 50 years in politics. Some good, some bad, but mostly ugly. And tonight, we're going through it all. The greed, the corruption, the rotten to the core Clintons. Starting with one of their biggest controversies, Whitewater. It started back in 1978, when the Clintons partnered up with another couple, James and Susan McDougall. And together they borrowed money from the bank with a plan to turn some Arkansas mountain land into a spot with vacation homes. But the real estate opportunity flopped. Bill and Hillary lost a lot of money. And Jim McDougal went into banking, starting this savings and loan company called Madison Guarantee. And that's where the story gets a little more interesting. Madison Guarantee ended up being a pretty sketchy business. McDougal used it to defraud millions of dollars. And that opened up a federal investigation of all McDougal's business dealings, with Whitewater, Bill, and Hillary at the center. And the timing wasn't great for the Clintons. The investigation blew up in 1994 while Bill was in the White House. A key witness alleged that Bill pressured him into giving an illegal loan for the Whitewater deal. And according to Vox, other allegations swirled about the Clintons and Madison, including claims that McDougal used Madison funds to pay off Bill's gubernatorial campaign debts in 1985, and that Bill appointed a friendly state bank regulator to protect McDougal. A lot of sketchy spending, a lot of missing details, and a lot of corruption. Here's Bill on CBS in 97. This thing's been going on for over three years. Tens of millions of dollars have been spent. And there have been, by the way, two federal reports by independent agencies saying that what I said and what my wife said in the very beginning of this was true, that we were not involved in running the savings and loan, that we lost money on a real estate deal, and that this whole inquiry is, is going after two people who lost money on a real estate deal made uh, almost 19 years ago now. The thing about the Clintons is that they always seem to weasel their way out of trouble. So while other people went to jail for the fraud scandal, the Clintons didn't, and Bill kept running the country. Which brings me to this, Travelgate. In 1993, not long after Bill took office, he fired a handful of longtime White House employees working in the travel office. It was a pretty questionable decision. But like most things the Clintons do, there was an ulterior motive. Turns out Bill and Hillary wanted to make room for their buddies. You know, take the cronies from Little Rock and move them to D.C. Well, that raised some ethics concerns, and it didn't sit well with America. The New York Times reported back in 93 that over the course of several embarrassing days, the White House was forced to retreat, rehire five of the seven, investigate its own actions. So most of the fired employees got their jobs back, and all was well. But not really. Bill's time in the White House was just the start of the Clinton corruption. Enter the Clinton Foundation, the mother of all money schemes. They established the nonprofit in the 90s with the goal of helping others. At least that's what they told us. But it doesn't really always look that way. Back in 2015, the Federalist reported that between the years of 2011 and 2013, the Clinton Foundation spent less than 10% of its budget on charities. That's odd. So we have to wonder, where in the world did the rest of the cash go? Well, I'd like to point out what Vox once reported. At least 181 companies, individuals, and foreign governments that have given to the Clinton Foundation also lobbied the State Department when Hillary ran the place. Hmm. It sounds like the so-called charity was double timing as the Clinton slush fund. And this wasn't the only time Bill and Crooked were accused of using their political stature to make money. In the book Clinton Cash, Peter Schweitzer writes this. Of the 13 Bill Clinton speeches that fetched 
a half a million or more, only two occurred during the years his wife was not Secretary of State. It sounds a little odd, right? I mean, that's a lot of money for a speech. And we can't ignore the timing. These big payouts mostly occurred while Hillary was Secretary of State. Almost makes you wonder, what was really happening behind the scenes? And I'm not the only one asking questions. The pricey speeches have been raising eyebrows for a while. Hillary tried to explain it back in 2014. It has been reported you've made five million making speeches. The president's made more than a hundred million dollars. Well, if if you you have no reason to remember, but we came out of the White House not only dead broke but in debt. Uh, Bill has worked really hard, and it's been amazing to me. He's worked very hard. Do you think Americans can understand five times the median income in this country for one speech? Well. Let me put it this way. I thought making speeches for money was a much better thing than getting connected with any one group or company, as so many people who leave public life do. Nobody's buying that. The Clintons have been and always will be all about the money. And they don't care how they get it, even if it means selling out the country. Eric Eggers was the lead investigator for Clinton Cash. I mean, I didn't even remember that. A hundred million dollars for speaking engagements? That is an astounding amount of money. And while his wife was Secretary of State, a lot of that had to have been overseas, right? It was almost entirely overseas, Jesse, and that's such a great point. And you mentioned the fact that 11 of the 13 speeches that paid Bill Clinton over half a million dollars occurred while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. Put it another way. Bill Clinton leaves office and for eight years is only offered two speeches of over half a million dollars. Actually, it was exactly a half a million dollars. Then all of a sudden, Bill Clinton raises his prices and lo and behold, the international interest in what Bill Clinton has to say spikes dramatically at the same time that Hillary is Secretary of State. And oh, by the way, as we've reported, as other people have reported, is absolutely an overlap with these international people that had business before the State Department. Don't forget that in 2010, Bill Clinton was paid a half a million dollars by Russian banks because at the same time, 20 percent of U.S. uranium were being transferred to Vladimir Putin, of all people. At the same time, money was going to the Clinton Foundation. So uh, there's always been an intermingling of interest and none of it looks good. Tell us about the Clinton Foundation, because it was flying high for a while. I mean, Epstein was on the jets. Bill was going to Africa with Hollywood celebrities and the money was pouring in. Saudi Arabia, all over the place. And then all of a sudden, what happened? The money dried up. Why was that? Um, well, I think it had something to do with Hillary Clinton's presidential loss in 2016. Right. Because they went from raising over $60 million in that year to now, as Axios reported recently, donations are down 75%. So obviously, to your point, the business model for the Clintons has always relied on proximity to power. And when the Clintons don't have it, no one wants to talk to them, or certainly no one wants to give them money. And that's got to be bad for business for the Clintons. It's one of the reasons why they recently came out and said, all of a sudden, we're offering leadership classes now through Masterclass. The Clintons may not be broke, but they don't have the money coming in through the Clinton Foundation slush fund anymore, and so they're course correcting. How much now, at this point, can Hillary and, and Bill make in the speaking circuit? Because she's disgraced, to a certain extent, only she lost the election. <laughs> But she's disgraced in the sense that, you know, she's involved in this Russia hoax. I don't think that matters to many leftists that are willing to pony up money to hear crooked talk. But, you know, you have Bill Clinton uh, figured for being on Epstein Island, you know, running around in these jets. Are people still willing to pay these people? Um, unfortunately, I think absolutely. You know, it's funny, Jesse, you're having this special where you look at political families across the country, and it's kind of like in school when everyone would get a different national park and they'd have to issue a report on it. I get to talk about Yellowstone. The Clintons are the Yellowstone of political <laughs> corruption because like the old faithful geyser, the Clinton family corruption is both historically consistent and has proven to attract paying customers from around the world. So I think that the Clintons will continue to have speaking affairs. Remember, Hillary Clinton thinks the election was stolen from her. Right. So you're, you're going to have lots of people that want to hear that story. Yeah. And Bill will always have tales to sell internationally. All right. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you sharing the tales of Clinton corruption.
My pleasure, Jesse. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.